Greg Klink is in his 15th year as the head coach of the Chico State men's basketball program. Since taking over the reins in 2008, the former Gavilan College player and former Rams men's head coach has established Chico State as one of the premier Division II programs in the nation, leading the Cats to an 11 postseason appearances, including eight NCAA championship tournament berths, while claiming three NCAA West Region titles and three California Collegiate Athletic Association regular season championships. Please welcome Greg Klink. Thank you. I want to uh, start by telling you how honored I am to be here today. I want to thank Mike Lovano and leadership Gilroy for the opportunity to be here. Uh, I love this community. I was born Wheeler Hospital, 1971. Uh, spent a lot of time in Gilroy growing up. My brother and I uh, spent a lot of days at our grandparents' house on the corner of Hannah and Second Street. My grandfather was the first four sport athlete in Gilroy High history. I'm a Gavin College Ram graduate, uh, coached here. So to be back in this community and be able to do this uh, is, is really an honor. What I'm going to talk about today is culture building. I've been the head basketball coach at Chico State for 15 years now. And what I'm gonna take you through is how we built the program. Okay, I got to Chico State in 2008. I'm a Chico State graduate. I was fortunate enough to be on the basketball team for a couple years after a gavel in college at Chico State. And going back to Chico State was a dream for me. Okay, it was a dream job. It was an opportunity that when it became open, uh, I put my heart and soul into getting the Chico State job and I just feel very fortunate to be able to lead this program. And what I'm gonna talk about is how we develop culture and how we sustain culture in our program. And what I'm hoping is that all of you can take something from this into your businesses, into your companies, into your families, into the teams maybe that you're a part of, and try and develop and improve the culture with which you operate. One of the things that I think is most important is to have a vision, okay? So let me talk a little bit about this. I spent 14 years as an assistant basketball coach before I got to Chico State. I worked for four different head coaches, I saw some great things as an assistant coach. I saw some things that I knew that we did in different programs that I was gonna implement if I ever got my opportunity to be a head coach. I also saw things that weren't good. I, I saw things that I didn't like. I said, I'm gonna do that, I'm not gonna do that. So I spent 14 years coming up with a vision of what I wanted the basketball program to look like when I got my opportunity. Okay, and this vision was, was in my head and I'd formulate it, I'd write it down, I'd think about it, I was just consumed with coming up with a vision. When I was a kid, I was a huge Duke basketball fan. Okay, when they first got going, when Mike Krzyzewski first started building this program, I, I became enamored, not only with the fact that they won, but how they played. How, how hard they played, how they dove on the floor for loose balls, their defense, how they played defense, the camaraderie, how they responded to their coach. Those were the type of things that resonated with me and became part of the vision of what I wanted a basketball program to look like when I took it over. I was 15 years old in 1986 and I watched the Boston Celtics win the NBA championship. You've got some of the greatest basketball players to ever play the game sitting on this bench right here, all guys with the exception of Larry Bird, who was the best player on that team, all guys that could have been the best player on any other team, but they sacrificed and they bought into a role to be a part of something special and one of the best NBA teams to ever play the game. We all watch the Warriors, okay? We got a lot of Warriors fans in here, okay? We like to watch the Warriors. We like to watch Steph Curry make threes. The thing that I love about the Warriors is just their camaraderie their culture, how they share the ball. You can see a genuine affection and brotherhood with these guys. It's not just about winning, it's about playing for each other and sacrificing for each other. So these are the type of things that I think about when coming up with a vision for the Chico State basketball program. Part of my vision was winning championships. We've been fortunate enough to do that. 
Okay, and it's not just about getting great basketball players. It's about getting great guys that are going to buy into this vision. And then ultimately, the end-all goal is to send these guys out with a college degree better equipped than when they got to Chico State to go out and tackle the world. So before anything, having a vision, knowing what this thing looks like, and then here are 10 principles that we talk about on a daily basis, a weekly basis with our team to build and sustain great culture in our program. First one, probably the most important one, people first. You have to have great people in your organization. Okay, so I knew that, that in that first year, it wasn't about winning basketball games. It was what do we do as fast as possible to change the culture of this program. So quickly, it took me two weeks to identify who needed to be there and who didn't, and the ones that didn't were moved out. And I told my assistant coach, I said, we need eight guys. We need to recruit eight guys. They need to be good basketball players, but more importantly, they need to be eight guys that are going to buy into our vision, buy into the culture, sacrifice themselves, and try and get this thing back on track. And so that's what we did. Getting the right people in your organization is the most important thing. People that are going to buy into your vision and not only build the culture, but find ways to make it better. Characteristics we look for when we recruit. Okay, I would think this would be characteristics that any company, any business would want when they're trying to find employees, people that are honest. Okay, what we do is hard, we all make mistakes, we want people to be accountable for those mistakes. Obviously, passion is a big one for us. We want people that are passionate about basketball, passionate about working hard. Okay, working hard, putting in time, uh, effort is obviously important, selfless is a big one for us. I'm going to talk about roles here in a second, but you need to be selfless. You need to give yourself to something greater than your own selfish needs. Being motivated, obviously, and then toughness is a big one. This is a guy named Sean Park. Sean Park graduated in 2014. He was a senior on our first regional championship game, and he embodies everything up there on the left. He's the epitome. And we have a lot of guys over my 15 years that are like Sean Park. Okay, and they're not all like Sean Park, okay, but, but we're trying to find guys that are close. Sean Park graduated from high school, went to Westmont College, got to Westmont College, and tore his ro rotator cuff, was out for the year rehabbing a shoulder injury. Transferred to Chico State the next year. We were ready for him to play as a freshman, and two weeks into it, he tears his ACL. So his first two years of college, he spent in the training room rehabbing, okay, and was just mentally tough, physically tough. Came back, played for us four years. After his junior year, he graduated. Okay, senior year, senior season, he was getting a master's degree in kinesiology and teaching classes at the university. So you talk about passionate, hardworking, selfless, motivated, a guy that values an education. He would be the epitome of what we look for when we're trying to find people to fit our organization. Standards we live by. I'm not big on, on rules where I say, hey, you have to do this or else, okay? Or, or if, you, if you don't do this, you're on the track. We, we have standards that we talk about all the time. Everything we do. Here are some examples of some. We have standards of how we conduct ourselves in a classroom. You two guys right here would be great, right? You're sitting almost in the front row. You're attentive. We talk about that. How do you interact with your professors, Right? How do you act in class? Get there early. We make sure that they do that. Study hall. We have study hall three days a week. We get to study hall early. If study hall starts at 5, you're there before that. Your cell phone's put away. You're in your space. And when that 5 o'clock bell hits, we're working. Okay, practice. We have standards for how we practice. We practice hard. Okay, and it, it, if you came to our practice, you would never see anybody walking anywhere. It's one drill to the next drill. There's an intensity level there. We have a red door that goes into our gym, and I talk a lot about that red door. And I say, hey, don't, don't come in that red door until you're ready to absolutely get after it. And sometimes I'll stand in the red door, and I'll put my hand on the guy, and I'll say, are you ready? Are you, don't walk in here until you're ready. Go back out, get yourself going, and when you come in here, it's go time. We have standards about how we treat people in the community. Chico State is a special place. We're a Division II program, and people in our community care about our success. So we have a lot of boosters. We have a lot of kids 
that look up to our players, how we treat those people. We talk about how we treat them, being good role models, how we conduct ourselves downtown on campus, how we conduct ourselves in in the weight room would be another example. When we go into the weight room, how hard we work, the intensity level, how we support each other, how, how the veterans help the rookies teach them how to lift. Okay, so there's a lot of standards that we have in terms of how we work. We have standards in terms of how we travel. If you saw our basketball team walk through the Sacramento airport, we're all dressed sharp. We have collared shirts on. We all have matching sweatsuits. We look sharp. We talk the right way, right? We treat flight attendants with the utmost respect. Waiters, waitresses, hotel staff, these are things that we talk about and prep them on and teach them and hold them to as we we travel throughout the state of California playing games. Okay, pride in our product. This, this, Rich was talking about camaraderie and pride and how much pride he had when he got to the Marines. And the thing that struck me is that that's not something that just happens when you enlist. That's not something that just happens when you put on a Chico State uniform. Right? I really believe that the way you develop pride and the way that you get your players, your employees, the people you work with to have pride in your company, in your program, is you get them to invest. The harder they work, the more they invest, the, they invest, the better they feel about their contribution, the more pride they're going to have in what they do. We are special. We feel like we're special. We feel like we work extremely hard, and the culture we created is something that we really, really, really are proud of. I'll tell you a quick story. Okay, when I, when I applied for the Chico State job in 2008, I told you I, was a, I, would, I played at Chico State. I graduated in 94. Uh, I went on the interview. The interview started at 8 a.m. It ended at 6 p.m. that night. I met with the president, the vice president, the athletic director, the hiring committee, One hour during that day, I met with the current team. And I told you the program was not in a good spot. Okay, so there were 11 guys, 11 players in this room that I interviewed with. And so I went in and I talked to them about what the program was going to be like. I talked to them about offense and defense. And then I got into my own experience. And and I'm talking to them about how proud, how proud I am to have played basketball at Chico State. Right, and I'm looking around the room. And there was no pride in the group that I was talking to. I told you that they, they partied too much. They didn't want to go to class. Not all of them, but majority of them. Didn't want to go to class. Didn't want to win or didn't care about winning enough. Right? And, and you could just tell this was not a, pr- a, pr- pr- a proudful group. So I took off my jacket. I took off my tie. I took off my dress shirt. And I was wearing this T-shirt. Okay? This T-shirt is the championship t-shirt that our team won when I was a senior in college, okay? That day was the only time I've ever worn this thing. Now, I didn't do much as a player. I played in 12 games my senior year, okay? There are about 30 games in a season, so let that sink in. I didn't do much to win many games with this shirt during a game. I was the guy that was on the bench waving the towel, right? Okay, but, but I had so much pride in... You know, not just the shirt, but the accomplishment that, that what I went through, what our teammates went through, uh, and I'm really, really proud of this. This shirt, when I take it home, is going to be folded back up, put in my third dresser drawer, left side, and it'll sit there until I give that talk again, okay? So I, I talk about that because I want you to know how proud I am of Chico State, how proud these guys are, and it's all because of the investment and how hard we work and what we sacrifice. The Daily Grind talks about what we do on a daily basis, right, to improve, okay? I don't, I don't set team goals. Like, we've won three regional championships. We've won three conference championships. And in all those years, I've never once sat in a meeting at the beginning of the year and said, hey, guys, the goal this year is to win the West Region Championship. Never do that, right? Our goal is constant improvement. Our first meeting is talking about, hey, what can we do to get a little bit better every day? And if we work hard, if we have great habits, right, if we have great attitudes, and we get better every day, 
those West Region Championships, those Conference Championships, those are byproducts of us conducting ourselves the right way, of us showing up every day and giving a great effort, of supporting each other and sacrificing. Okay, so the daily grind is about how hard we work. I talked about the red door. Okay, when you walk through the red door, it's, it's go time. It's go time, and that's something that we talk about every single day, but that's an expectation, and we work hard, and that's something that we hold our guys accountable for. I think this is a big one for any organization, any business. Everybody's got to have a role, okay, and you've got to perform your role and buy into your role and do it to the best of your abilities. I think one of the things, one of the best things that we do as a program is at the end of practice every day, and it doesn't just happen at the end of practice, but this is an opportunity at the end of practice, we stand around the center circle, and we talk about practice, we talk about upcoming, we talk about a lot of things, but one of the things that we do are called put-ups. We all know what a put-down is, okay, we're big on put-ups, and one of the things that I think is really powerful is when we give a put up to somebody that maybe doesn't have a glamorous role. I had a guy last year, graduated last year, he's playing professional basketball now, named Malik Duffy, he was an All-American, one of the best players I've ever coached. Malik had somebody every single day of his career tell him how good he was and what a great job he was doing. Okay, but then we have another guy named Josh Curls who barely plays. Great guy, great student, bought into his role, shows up to practice every single day. So oftentimes when we get around that circle, it's talking about guys like Josh Curls, right? Malik, Malik hears it every day. It's like, Josh, what a phenomenal job you did today in practice. You know how much better you're making us in practice because of the attitude you have and your ability to show up here every day even though you're not playing? We have three student managers, Okay, guys that aren't good enough to be on the basketball team but want to be a part of the basketball team. These are the guys that show up an hour early and sweep the floor, set up the score clock, get the balls out, right? When, when someone slips on the floor in practice and they're, they're diving on the floor with a towel, wiping the sweat up, very, very unglamorous role, but we'll talk about these guys. I just did this last week. I talked about all three of them at the end of our practice and told them what a phenomenal job they were, were doing and we wouldn't be able to operate the way we operate without, without their contribution. So put-ups, okay? This guy here was one of those 11 guys in the room the day I interviewed for the job. He was one of the very few that made it, okay? And I put him up there because he played for me for three years. So he was on the team before I got the job, and then he played for me for three years. Like, this guy could guard. He could guard four different positions on the floor. He played great defense. One of the best defenders I've ever coached in my career. That's why I kept putting him in. But then he'd go in and he'd take a bad shot or he'd turn it on and pull him in. So after two years of this, I said, hey, Josh, I sat him down at the beginning of the year. I said, hey, do you want to play? And he goes, yes, I want to. I go, no, do you, do you really want to play? Like significantly, do you want to play? And he says, yes, I'm dying to play. I'm dying to play. I said, okay, here's what you need to do. You need to not shoot the ball. Unless there's less than five seconds on the shot clock and we're desperate, then hoist it up. But, but don't shoot it, right? Can you, can you do that? And he kind of sighed and he's like, yeah, I could do that. I said, don't dribble it. Don't, don't, if, if you dribble it more than two times, make a jump stop, right? And just, just pass it and cut through. If you catch it at the top of the key, just swing it and cut through. Can you do that? Yeah, I can do that. I said, can you play defense? And he stuck his chest. And he goes, coach, you know I can play defense. I go, I know. I know. Good. So let's see how this goes. Buy into your role and let's see how it goes. He bought into his role. Okay, it was our sixth man on our first conference championship team, 2012. We don't win that thing without him. If he didn't buy into his role that year, we don't win that thing. Okay, but there's a guy that bought into his role. Here's another guy. This guy played for me, redshirted, and was with me for Four years, played was with me for five years, okay? Barely played, barely played, but did more to develop our culture in the five years that he was there than any other guy I've ever coached. Two-time, all-academic, athlete of the year, 3.9 GPA, double major, great leader, great role model, wanted to play, knew his limitations, bought into his role, and did more, like I said, for our culture than any other player I've ever coached. This one's a big one for us, right? Why do we have athletics? 
There's lots of reasons why we have athletics. Okay, one of them is we, we, and this is how I look at it, a part of it is that I know the Chico State basketball program is a walking billboard for Chico State University. Okay, how many Chico State grads do we have in here? Oh, good, we got a, we got a few. Uh, what's the first thing that when you say you're from Chico State, what, what, what do you hear? Party, right? Party school, right? I hear it all the time. Coach at Chico State, went to Chico, oh, that party school, right? You got, that's the, like the best party school in the country, right? So that's the reputation. I know, I know when we go down south on a, on a Wednesday night and we play Thursday, Saturday, come home Sunday, I know I've got four days to change that perception with everybody that we come in contact with. And it's something I take really seriously, how we conduct ourselves, how we speak to people, right? How, how, how we treat each other. Those are the things that are important in terms of trying to change that perception of Chico State from a party school. I want people walking away saying, God, did you see those 15 guys that walked through the airport? I mean, what gentlemen? What, what, I mean, is that what Chico State's producing? Sign me up, right? I love this place. I go here all the time. My son and I drove here last night. Where was the first place we stopped? Starbucks, right? I love Starbucks, okay? Apple, I love app, my Apple computer. My son's got an uh, Apple watch. We've got iPhones. Love everything about it. Our team has an Adidas contract. I love how it fits. The guys love the shoes. All of these things here I look at and I feel good about. What do people think when they see that on our chest, right? That's what it's about. And that's something that we talk to our guys all the time about is to be a billboard, represent yourself, represent the team, represent the department, and represent the university and community in a first-class manner. Communication. Obviously, in any organization, right, communication's key. And it's something that's hard. There are many times when I don't want to talk to four or five players a day, but I do it, right? It's just constant communication. Constant communication with the group and constant communication with the individual. I'm talking to the group every single day, it, whether it's a meeting, a practice, a weight room session, and then I'm talking to at least three to five players in my office individually every day, watching film, talking about academics, but it's just constant communication and brutal honesty. And here's the other thing about this, okay, about the communication piece of it. I'm always looking for problems. And that kind of sounds kind of funny, maybe, but I'm always looking for problems. I'll go to one of my captains and I'll say, Mike, I mean, what's going on in the locker room? I mean, is, who, how's this guy doing? This guy didn't seem right today in practice. What's going on with him? My assistant coaches have beads on these guys. Right? They tell the assistant coach more than they tell the head. What's going on with him? I'm constantly looking for problems, and I call it confronting the snowball before it rolls down the hill into an avalanche, right? And then we got big problems. And oftentimes, I really feel as leaders, we have an issue with somebody. Somebody's not, you know, attitude isn't right. Somebody's not conducting them, and we want it just to go away. Right? And that's why I'm constantly looking for these things and trying to nip things in the bud. But it takes an everyday communicating with your team, with your group, with your employees to try and confront those snowballs before they come avalanches. And then, obviously, with college-age guys, this is a big one, right? Being, being savvy about technology. Okay? They're on their phones, whether we like it or not. Knowing how to communicate with them uh, through technology is important as well. Accountability. I talked in the beginning about having a vision. Okay, having a vision is great. That's the number one thing I think in building great culture is you got to see what it looks like. You got to know what it looks like. But if you're not willing to be stubborn and hold your people accountable for your vision, then the vision's pointless. Right? And this is a hard one. Sometimes you have to be the bad guy, right? And I'll talk about year compared to year 15. So when I took over the program, I told you I'd spent 14 years as an assistant coach formulating this vision, formulating this. I knew I wanted to coach since I was in the sixth grade. So this vision has been formulating for years and years and years. There was only one person that very first year in 2008 that had a clear, you know, sight of the vision. It was me. I'm the only one that knew what it looked like. So I had to teach that vision to my assistant coaches 
I had to teach that vision to the student athletes. I had to educate my athletic director about what this, what this is going to look like when we get this thing going. But year one was the hardest. Right? And I wanted to win basketball games, but I knew it wasn't about winning basketball games the first year. It was about going into the gym every single day and holding them accountable for how we're going to practice. I'd walk into the gym, and I'd see guys off task. I'd see guys, and I would immediately, boom, you need to do this. You, my coaches, you guys need to hold. I mean, it's an everyday thing. Holding them accountable for how we dressed, how we talked, how we conducted ourselves in study hall. I mean, it was every single day being stubborn and relentless and holding everybody in the program accountable for the vision. Now, year 15 is a completely different deal. I walked into the gym yesterday before practice. All 16 guys are on task. Three guys do a basket, two balls. They'd gone through a ball handling routine that they knew they needed to do. They're working with each other. They're conducting their own practice before we even started. Right? And if somebody gets off task, more times than not, before I can get over, like we have a freshman that maybe doesn't know what they're doing, and I start beelining it for that freshman, one of our players, coach, I got this. Brennan Wheeler, one of our leaders, this is what we do. Puts his arm around the guy, this is what we do. We walk into, here's, here's what we do. When we travel, here's what we do. Right? So it's, it's a flywheel right now. It's spinning. The culture's going in a great deal. Now it's just about finding little things to make it better. But holding the, everybody accountable is extremely important. And there's still things in year 15 that, that we got to talk about, right? And we got to get back on track sometimes. But this one to me is really, really important in not only building the culture, but, but making sure that everybody's accountable for your vision. Service leadership. I don't know how many of you, you uh, follow college athletics, but one of the big things in college athletics at all levels right now is a thing called the transfer portal, right? People are transferring all the time. And last, the last couple of years, the NCAA has, has said, hey, you can switch schools without sitting out. I mean, there used to be rules about tra anybody can transfer anybody anywhere now, okay? Guys don't transfer out of our program. And to me, the reason is, is because we treat them so good. We are demanding, we hold them accountable, right? It's not all fun and games, but at the end of the day, to a man, everybody in our program is treated with respect, with love, and that's not a word I just throw around. I love my guys. I love them. I build great relationships with them, and I love them, and I treat them well. We serve them. We ask a lot out of them, but we are there for them. If they're sick, we get them to the health center. Okay, if they're home in bed, we bring them food, right? We bring them medica whatever they need. Okay, we serve them. Okay, if they need academic help, we make sure that they have tutors. We got a freshman doesn't know where to go to get a tutor for a science class, we're walking them over to the Student Learning Resource Center to get them a tutor. Okay, we're finding somebody, if they need help with the paper, we're finding somebody on campus is going to be able to help them. Well, what can we do to help them academically? We do a lot of things at my house. They come into my home. Okay, the players throughout the program have seen my three sons grow up. They know my wife. They know my kids. Okay, it's, it's not just a player-coach deal. It is a, a deal where I bring them into my family and we build great relationships with them that way. And then we do things with workshops. Okay, I have a professor on campus that comes in that helps him write papers, how to take notes, how to effectively read a textbook. We, a couple years ago, we took a, a cooking class. Okay, we send these guys out of the dorms, they go and they get into their own apartments, and some of them don't know how to cook, so we did a workshop on how to cook. Okay, so just things that we can do outside of basketball to make sure that their experience is great and that they're, they're growing as individuals, not just basketball players. And then the last one, before I close up, is just about relationships. The stronger the relationship that we have with our student athletes, the stronger relationship you have with your employees, the more effective your, your operation is going to be. Okay? I got into coaching 27 years ago. Okay? I got into coaching, yes, I like basketball. Okay? I like, but that's not the driving deal for me. The driving deal for me is... I love to lead, okay, and I love, I love the camaraderie and the brotherhood that's built through leading a team and being part of a team. 
And that's really what, what excites me, okay? If I wasn't coaching basketball, I would be trying to lead in some other area because that's what I think I'm good at and that's what really excites me and, and gets me going. And one of the things that, that I know really builds the culture is the relationship. This guy here, number 45, Malik Duffy, I mentioned him, the All-American. He was in my office every day. One of the greatest human beings I've ever been around. One of the greatest players I've ever been around. One of the greatest people I've ever been around. The relationship with him was easy. He's in Mexico playing professionally right now. We still talk every week. Okay, so my point is to build great relationships with the people in your organization and your culture will be that much more effective. My information here, if you ever have questions, want to talk more about this, uh, this is a topic that obviously I'm passionate about, so feel free to email me, call me, uh, but I really appreciate, thank you again, Mike Lovano, for having me, and the community, I, I appreciate being here, and thank you so much.